we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Glory to your name. We stand in you, in your power, in your glory, in your honor, in your strength. We stand in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In him we stand, in his power. Amen. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you. What a great song. Kind of tells it like it is, isn't it? Amen. In him we stand. There we gain our strength and our courage. Amen. And our love for everyone. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, praise team. And we appreciate so much you leading us every, yes, you can give them a big hand. They lead us every Sunday into the presence of God with our music. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, here we are, and another week has gone by, and this is the first day of a new week, and we're together again, and you look beautiful this morning. God bless you, and thank you for coming, and we greet you in the name of Jesus. And uh, he's here, amen? He, he's here, his presence is here, and he's so real. For those that have come the first time at Word of Life, please stop by our welcome desk. It's in the foyer there. Just walk straight out. And you can see it. Take your bulletin with you because we have a gift, but we'd like to know who you are and where you're from. That's the way we do it here at Word of Life. And we thank you so much. Well, let's welcome everyone to Word of Life. It's a great day. Come on, welcome everyone. A beautiful Lord's Day here at Word of Life, God's house of prayer. Thank you so much. If you, uh, as members, have not uh, selected those um, uh, deacons and trustees uh, for nominations, please. Your ballots are still out there on the right table as you go out. Please keep that in mind. We thank you so very, very much. There are so many activities going on here at Word of Life. Many are in the process of going on. Some are upcoming. And we want to make sure that you're aware of all of these. Easter it will be this month, toward the end of this month. comes early this year. And we have lots of activities planned and events around that Easter uh, weekend, uh, the Palm Sunday and, and, uh, and Easter. And the children have something special. And we want to show you a video from Pastor Jim and the children's ministry. He, they want you to know what they're going to do and how you can be part of it. So let's roll that film on the children's ministry for Easter. Hey guys, Easter. Pastor Jim here, and I wanted to tell you about a few things that are coming up here for kids at Word of Life International Church. Very exciting times. We have, on March the 20th, during the 1030 Elementary Kids Church, we have Embarrassment Day. Embarrassment Day is a great lesson about how Jesus endured the shame of the cross because he loves us so much. It's a powerful lesson for kids and adults as well who dress up in something embarrassing and they get lots of church books the kids do that day. On March the 26th, it's a Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m., we have the Easter breakfast for kids and parents. $5 for kids to come. They get a great breakfast. They see a show. They see Cowboy and Pillow. They go down underneath the gym and look for Easter eggs in the dark as a family. And it's a great time. I guarantee the kids are, who come to the Easter breakfast are going to get at least, at least 30 Easter eggs in their bag full of candy. It's going to be great. So we sell tickets in the lobby and also upstairs in 200 for that event. So get your tickets today. You also buy tickets for your friends and neighbors who you think might be able to come. It's a great time to show them that this church and especially that the Lord loves them so much. Then on that afternoon, we have the community Easter egg hunt at one o'clock where all the people in the community come and look for Easter eggs down, down underneath the gym. We give every family a flashlight that says Word of Life on there, and it's a great advertisement for our church 
that God loves people around this place. So we need your help. We also need your candy. So if you want to sign up to help be a volunteer at any of those events, we would love to see you in the lobby. We'll sign you up. We'll take your phone number. We'll take your email address and we'll let you know what's going on. So this is Pastor Jim telling you, I got to go eat some candy. I mean, I got to go eat some eggs. I mean, I got to go stuff some candy in Easter eggs. Yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Okay, he makes you get excited about that, and that's an exciting weekend. Easter is so important to the church, that's why we meet the first day of the week, to celebrate his resurrection. So keep all that in mind. It's going to be a great time. Ushers, if you will please come at this time, we're going to receive God's tithes and our offerings. And uh, Pastor Marco, why don't you come and uh, offer a word of prayer here as we prepare to worship him in, in this uh, tithes and offering. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful, Lord, for this opportunity to give to your house. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing here in, in this church. And we ask God that, that you would continue to inspire uh, our congregation. They see the need, Lord. There is a need in this community and there's a need here, right here at Word of Life. And so, God, I just pray that you would inspire them to give today, Lord. We, need, we, we know it's, a, it's something to be obedient. We have to be obedient, God. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be obedient this morning as we give. May you bless the giver, and may you bless the rest of our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Give them another hand. It was a great song, wasn't it? Thank you so much, Bill. We appreciate it so very, very much. As the youth continue to prepare for uh, competition, uh, Amran, will you please come? And uh, we're going to have the scripture quoted at this time. Hello, good morning, church. My name is Omran Widrago, and I'll be quoting Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He presented himself to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this one command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or date the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. As he was speaking these words, he was looking up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going up, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. The apostles returned to Jerusalem from a hill called the Mount of Olives, a south they walked in the city. They went upstairs to the upper room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They were, all, they were constantly praying together along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter spoke among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, it's not for you to know the time, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one in our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field where he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this and called that field in their language, Akadema, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted and let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. The whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. So they chose two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which two of these men you have chosen to take over the apostolic ministry. Jews left to go to where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lots fell towards Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. Thank you, Amran. And so the Bible says we're to hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against him. It becomes a light to our path. Amen? Lamp unto our feet. Thank you again so very, very much. We appreciate it. Well, let's stand and move about and uh, change your order a little bit while the choir goes down and find their seats. Meet someone and let them know it's good to see them. Amen.
Amen. All right, let's find our seats. Fellowship is a great thing. A amen. It's good to see our family after a week. Of course, some of us are here all week. <laughs> okay, thank you so very, very much. This is the first Sunday of the month, and this is a Sunday we receive a special offering, our missions offering, to support our missionaries all around the world. We have many, many missionaries serving across this great globe that we live on, and they're doing a wonderful job, and we want to share with you some of the work that is going on. We're going to show that video to you right now. You can see where our support is going to help the Word of God be spread worldwide. We ready, folks? Okay, here we go, I believe. Hey, I'm Melissa, and here's a look at... What's happening in Assemblies of God World... <laughs> Sounds like our children's church. <laughs> God okay. will... We had it at 8 o'clock. You, you st still have it there, Jimmy? Okay. If that one comes up again, you can let it play. Here we go. There it is. In early 2015, Cyclone Pam devastated the island nation of Vanuatu. In the months that followed, Assemblies of God World Missions partnered with the national church there to begin rebuilding churches and homes that were destroyed. Recently, AGWM Executive Director Greg Mundus traveled to Vanuatu to observe the rebuilding process and encourage the church. Here we are in a uh, truck going up uh, a mountain in Vanuatu, and uh, we're going to a village called Green Hill, and we're going to see uh, uh, the chief and a bunch of pastors that have come up uh, to visit with us, and we're going to see a whole bunch of uh, school kids that are going to be with us. So. We're pretty excited about that. We're here to just make sure that uh, the money that has been given is, is going to where it needs to go to. And we're, we're excited to see all that God has for us here and what he's uh, doing in this village and in other villages that we'll visit as well. It's very difficult to get materials into the island. I was so impressed by one village that I was in where the church was destroyed, their, their uh, school was destroyed, and yet there was this optimism amongst the people. In fact, the very next day, when everybody thought everything would be shut down, they started school again because they see how important it is for their children to have education. Okay, I'd like to know uh, this village here in Green Hill uh, that had a school that was functioning with about 120 kids, the whole building was blown away. But immediately afterwards, uh, the community gathered together under the leadership of their headmaster and, and erected uh, a temporary building. They didn't even wait for any kind of help. Immediately, they put something together so that the teachers could come and the classrooms were full. We certainly want to honor their uh, industrious behavior and their energy to uh, teach the children. They're not only teaching them uh, curriculum, but they're teaching them about Jesus as well. This is the valley that uh, comes, uh, comes all the way in from the ocean and the winds just blew through here 
and uh, just blew people's homes apart and the church apart. But these people are so resilient. They're going to find a way to do what they need to do, and they want to worship God, and they're finding a way. Amazing what God is doing in those island nations, isolated from, you know, either out in the middle of the ocean, Pacific Ocean, but God loves the islands, loves the island people, and people are getting saved, churches are being built, the kingdom is growing, and that's because God is sovereign, and I believe it's because the American church is praying, and I believe because they're giving. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm amazed each time we watch these videos at, at the amazing work that God is doing around the world. Aren't you? That was Brother Greg Mungness, our, Mungness, our director for World Missions, giving that report. Praise the Lord. Brother Matt, you pray for us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have a heart for missions, God. We thank you for the people that are being reached, Lord, this morning with this offering. Father, I pray that you would multiply it to affecting your gospel, Lord, and save many souls, Lord. You're, you don't wish that anybody should perish, Father, that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And bless this offering, Father, and bless everyone who gives, Father. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you so much. Word of Life is the only church in the world that takes you around the world in one service. Amen. I know it takes us a while to find Vananuda, but you didn't know where it was anyhow, so finally we found it and had our National Director of Missions give you a little picture of what's happening on that little island way out in the Pacific Ocean. Amen. Well, we're glad that you're here today. We believe that God is here in a special way as we open our hearts to him and minister by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Van Dyke family is here today. We're going to pray for them. At the end of the service today, they lost Mother Gifty. We're going to pray for them, continue to pray that God will comfort them and strengthen them as our family, church family, stands with them. Amen. Today is a very special day for everybody from Ghana. Today is Ghana's Independence Day. And I'm going to ask everybody from Ghana to please stand. Everybody from Ghana, please stand. Okay. Amen. Very good. God bless you. A number of years ago, you sent the British home and said, we'll take care of this ourselves. So that's why we're celebrating today. Today is the third in a series of messages we're speaking about on the prayer of Jabez. First Corinthians talks about the chronological order and the chronology of 
the people that lived in that day or the days before. When it comes to Jabez, it takes one or two verses to describe what happens in the life of Jabez. Jabez was born in pain, but he prayed in the pain that God would bless him, enlarge his territory, let his hand be upon him, and keep him from all that is evil. Today we've come to the third, let your hand be upon me. Last week we talked about the territory that God gives, gives us. And I want to mention one thing about the territory again. The territory that God gives you, the devil meets you there and tries to take it away from you. If you run away from the territory, when the enemy comes, the next time you come back, there's a lot of battles that need to be fought before you possess the land that God gave you. Israel was down in Egypt 430 years. Then they came back. It was a real process to reoccupy the land because all the parasites, Jebusites, mosquito bites, and all the others came and possessed the land that God had given them. But they were successful. So if it takes a longer battle when you come back, don't give up. Don't give up. God is with you. He will lead you. He will guide you. And eventually, you will possess the land. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. Brother Dan is going to read. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And Father, we cry unto you today that you would bless us, that your hand will be upon us, that you would give us the territory that you promised to your children by the work of Calvary. I pray, Lord, that you would come by the power of your Spirit and make yourself known in each of our hearts. Find us where we are and help us to become the individual that you've called us to be. Granted, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Something you will, if you're not already found out, I fill my messages with Scripture because the Scriptures are going to stand forever and forever. Willard Canlon one time said, you will never be any more eloquent than the Scriptures. Things of this earth are going to pass away, but God's Word is going to stand. And if we hide it in our heart, it will be defense against the evil things that are in our world today. God is looking for people who yearn to walk in greater measure of what God has promised for you and me. Some time ago, I heard a story of a man who had a dream. He dreamed he went to heaven and the angels are showing him all around the beautiful mansion that God had prepared, which has many rooms in it. And he noticed a building over to the side that was filled with gifts. And he asked, what is this building with gifts that are still here? And the angel said this in the dream. These are gifts. Listen to me. These are gifts I had for God's people, but they never asked me. How many of God's gifts are still going to be up there because we simply don't ask him? The Bible says, ask and what? Knock and what? Okay, seek and? So I pray that God will help us to keep on knocking, keep on seeking, keep on calling upon God, because God does answer prayer. Amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. And give the Lord a big hand. We must be willing to ask for it expectantly, believing that God answers prayer. God is looking for those who will respond responsibly and obediently. 
Today our study goes beyond what God can give Jabez, but to what God can give for you and me and what God holds in his hand. But his hand will be upon you for favor and for his mighty touch. Over and over again in the Bible it says, the hand of the Lord was upon this person or that person, and they did great things for God. Other times it says, the hand of the Lord was against them. And because they were not serving God, God allowed judgment to come upon them to bring them back to him. Everything that God does is not to destroy us or to give us a battle. It's to give us a victory. Amen. And sometimes God allows things to happen that will turn us around and bring us back to him that we might receive God's blessing. Our prayer is that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us to the many presents and much territory that God has for us. Brother Dan, read Ephesians chapter one. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. Like last Sunday, we not only fill our messages with scripture, we're going to fill them with prayer. Amen. You have not because you ask not. When we pray and seek the face of God, God is always there and able to help us. Notice what Paul is praying about for the Ephesian church. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you, this is one of those gifts, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That God will open your eyes of understanding to bring enlightenment to you of what is the hope of the calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of God's power towards you and me, according to the power that works within us. Amen. We're going to pray for that. We're going to bow your heads and pray. Brother Walt, he's going to come. You ask the pastors to pray with me today during this message. Lord, we ask with faith for a manifestation of the Holy Spirit to give us all an understanding of the many blessings that you have prepared for your people. We believe you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the promise you send us. Your plan is great. Your promise is great. Let your will be done. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, right now we pray, enlarge our sight, enlarge our understanding. We need you before anything you give to us. We need you, you alone. You be ahead of us so that miracle will follow us. Hop Sign will accompany us in the name of Jesus. El Shaddai, El Alam, the first and the last. The beginning and the end. The one who can do everything. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Today, we pray with great expect expectancy that you are going to do a miracle upon your children. Here, among us, in the midst of your congregation. Lord we thank you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Grant we exalt Lord. To you, Lord. We receive this inside. In yes, Jesus' we do, name we Jesus. pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Today, I'm going to mention different ways that the hand of God is upon us. First of all, let me talk about the hand of righteousness that God has for you and me. God is altogether righteous, and his hand is full of righteousness. His hand stretches out with full evidence of 
God's nature. And to call upon him is to call upon the nature of God. Psalms 48.10. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy hand, right hand is full of righteousness. Okay, we pray according to God's name. Remember the contest in the book of 1 Kings? It talks about Israel on Mount Carmel preparing a sacrifice first to Baal and then to God. The Baalites called upon the name of their God, but there was no answer. They cut themselves. They tortured themselves, hoping that their God would have mercy upon them and the fire would come down from heaven and consume their sacrifice. But it didn't happen. Why? Because there's no power in Baal. Amen. Only power comes from above, and it's the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Elijah comes and prays a simple prayer. Lord, let fire come down out of heaven and consume the sacrifice. And the fire came down from heaven, consumed the sacrifice. All the water that was around it was all licked up. And God proved the fact that he is the true and the living God. Say praise the Lord. According to the power of God. When God's hand rests upon us, it brings righteousness and justice to bear upon our life. Hosea says this, Who is wise? And he shall understand these things, prudent. And he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them but the transgressors shall fall therein. Okay, who is wise? This is not for dummies. Amen. It's for those who have the wisdom of God in your life and asking God for his greatness to come upon you. They shall know, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the just walk in them, but transgressors shall fall therein. So to one, God is answering prayer. The other, God is not because they're not walking according to God's will and according to God's purpose. Let's pray now that God's hand of righteousness will rest upon us. Lord, we desire more of your righteousness. Transform us, Lord Jesus, into your likeness, we pray. Give us an understanding heart that we might understand your righteousness and your aspects of our position in you. And Sister Kathy is going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ are wearing robes of righteousness. We thank you that, Father, when you see us you no longer see our sins, you no longer see our weaknesses and our frailties, but you see us as your son. Yes, you do, Jesus. We thank you for this righteousness. Lord, we also understand that it is for those who hunger. It is for those who thirst yes, after Lord. your righteousness that will be satisfied. Yes, Lord. Lord, fill us this morning. Fill us this morning, for you are our portion forever. Lord, we know that when we call upon you, when we hunger, when we thirst, you will fill us and we will be satisfied. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning because you are a wonderful and an awesome God. And it is in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. And we pray with expectancy. Fill us this morning and we will be like you. We will be transformed. Amen. Amen. Give him a hand for his righteousness. What are we doing when we pray? We're mixing God's word with faith. The Bible says the word preached to them profited them nothing because it was not mixed with faith. So today we're mixing faith deep in our heart, 
to believe God's word. The second hand is the hand of conviction. And I want you to note it is not the hand of condemnation. The Holy Spirit does not condemn you. The Holy Spirit convicts us and shows us the way we are walking that is contrary to the will of God and brings us back unto him that we might serve him. Part of the reality of God's hand is it's weighting us against all that is holy. Psalms 32, 4. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. And when you have that word selah at the end of a scripture, or a saying, it means stop and think about it. Here's something that's very important. Notice what it says, day and night. Your hand was heavy upon me. Why? Because David had gone astray. The heaviness, the weight that he was carrying was the load of sin that was upon him. And he was praying that God would come and forgive him. So he says... I acknowledge my sin unto you. Mine iniquities have I not hid. I will confess my transgression. Thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Sometimes there's like a weight that is upon us. And I know that sometimes that's a burden we're carrying for this or for that. But if it continues for a long time, we need to search our heart and see if we are following God's plan and God's purpose. The heaviness of his presence convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. John chapter 16. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Amen. This is good. It is needful and greatly desired for God's blessing upon us. We're going to pray again. At the hand of God's conviction, we'll search our lives. Though we will respond in humility and repentance, we receive his forgiveness and his cleansing. Sister Samaria is going to lead us. Heavenly Father, Lord, there is no detective greater than the conviction yes, of the Holy Lord. Spirit. Lord, we pray that when we seem to go back to our old ways, Lord, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it will bring it to our senses. And it will cause us to realize that the old Man on us had to be put to death. That the former things that we used to do, they're no longer part of our life because we've been bought with a price. We have been given new garments. We have been given a new name. You have come and lived inside of us and you have called us holy. Not because we deserve it. You pray the price. And in the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that I will not return back yeah. to my vomit. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Convince me. Yes, Persuade me. Change me. You, Bring me to my senses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. And when we cry unto God, God is there. And he's able to help us. Amen. The next is a hand that saves. God's hand reaches down wherever we are and finds us and lifts us up in him. The Lord's hand saves us from our sin by his great mercies. We need his saving hand to hold us and to rescue us when we go astray. He wants to save us 
even when we seem beyond saving. But today I want you to know, God's arm is not short. God's arm is not short. The song says he reached way down for me. He had to get way down there and pick us up. And look, what does it say in Isaiah 59, Brother Dan? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that saveth by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee, for those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Notice what the psalmist is praying. First, Isaiah says, your arm is not short, but you can reach down and pick me up. He says, most men proclaim everyone his own goodness. That's what we're hearing in politics today. Everybody is gooder than the other gooder. And so we have to make a decision which way we're going to go. But here it says, most men proclaim their goodness, but a faithful man, who can find him? A faithful man. I heard one time of a church that gave a pin. They were trying to find the most humble man in the church. So they gave the humble pin to a man that Sunday and the next Sunday, the man wore it back to church, and they took it from him. Why? Because humility hides itself. It doesn't say, hey, look at me. I'm so humble. No, we walk in obedience and humility before God. It says, I have called upon thee, for you will hear me. God, turn your ear towards me. Put up your hand. Cuff your ear. Hear my prayer. I'm crying unto you at this time. Show your marvelous loving kindness. Thou save us by the right hand, them that put their trust in thee, from those that rise up against you. If you're serving God, you will always have people rise up against you. But remember, it's the hand of God that reaches down and saves you. Then he says, Lord, keep me as the apple of your eye. You know what that means? God thinks so much of you that he can't take his eyes off of you. Keep me, Lord, as the apple of your eye. Let's pray together that God will do that for each of us today. We thank you, Lord, for your saving hand. We ask you to hold us safe and secure all our days. We ask you to stretch forth your hand, save those who seem far away, and bring them back to you. Marco is going to lead us in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your saving hand. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us secure. We thank you, Lord, for, for keeping us safe, Lord from the enemy. Well, Lord, we know that the enemy is out to kill, destroy, and to steal, Lord. Yes, he is. And God, we thank you for the times that we don't know that we're coming, but you surrounded us with your presence. You surrounded us with your protection. You surrounded us and put a shield of protection on us, oh God. And Lord, I pray for those people, Lord, that are that are far away from you, God. And I just ask that you would stretch out your hand and that you would save them, oh God, from, from what is to come. Lord, we know you're, the end is near, God. And we ask, God, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit onto this church so that we can be the light in the, of the world to this surrounding area, God. And so we ask, oh Lord, give us the nations, oh Lord. Give yes, us Lord. the nations, Jesus, and Granted, let us Jesus. point to you as our source. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 Give him a big hand. The next is the hand of God that restores. The blessings of restoration come directly from the hand of God. Joel says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar has eaten, the palmer worm has eaten, my great army which I sent unto you. All these worms are eating up your heritage. Don't let them do it. Amen. Let's believe God that God's going to restore again. I'm going to read from Psalms 23.3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restores our soul and leads us in the paths of righteousness. Psalms 80, 3, 7, and 19. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Three times in one short chapter, he prays that God would turn them around. They're going the wrong direction. They're losing the blessing of God. And he says, God, turn us again, that we may begin to seek your face. I believe this is all of our prayers for America today that God will turn us again to him. Amen. I believe that God wants to turn to us. When we cry unto him, he will be there and able to help us. Yes. Isaiah 57. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wrought. For the spirit should fall before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wrought and smote him. I hid me and was wrought and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. Where we have suffered loss, God wants to restore to us today. He wants to renew our relationship with him. Lord, let your hand be upon me. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Brother Bill's going to lead us. Lord, we ask today that you would restore to Do your people Jesus. those things that have been stolen, those things which have been lost by neglect, and that you would restore by your precious and powerful Holy Spirit yes, the joy of your salvation, the joy of deliverance from the enemy. And I pray, Lord, that you would restore to us the years that have been lost and even wasted. And that the years ahead, Lord, would be more fruitful than ever. As you restore to us, give us, Lord, give us the fruit that we long for in our spirit. And I pray that you would help each of us to restore that joy, that dream, that hope. That we need. Do, Lord Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you for families that are Hallelujah. longing to see their family members restored to faith in you. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks because we believe that you hear and answer our prayers for restoration today. Yes, Amen. Lord. Give him a big hand. Thank the Lord. The songwriter looked back across his life and he wrote the song, Wasted Years, Wasted Years. How many years have we wasted being away from God? If that is true, let's pray that God will bring us back to him once again. Then there is a hand that undergirds us. He not only brings us back to him, but he enlarges our territory and undergirds it with his hand. It is by his strength that we possess and hold on to our territory. Psalms chapter 18, verse 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holded me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. 
Thou hast enlarged my steps unto me, that my feet did not slip. Amen. We're praying for the undergirding of God, that our foundation will be upon the solid rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. That God will enlarge our steps. I like that. You'll be able to take bigger steps. Each day I try to take bigger steps. I'm trying to get used to my new knees. But I believe that day by day in the things of God, we learn to walk with him again. Let's pray that God's undergirding hand will be upon us. Brother Isaac's going to lead us. Father, thank you for your undergirding arms. Father, that holds us up even as we walk in the territory that you open for us. It is not by might. It is not by our power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Father, we thank you because when the enemy comes like a flood, yes. you will raise up a standard against him. You yes, will strengthen will. your people. You will equip your people. And Father, we thank you because you will never leave us nor forsake us, and your love will be true to us. And Father, thank you for the strength that even as we walk in that territory that you will give us, that we will be strengthened because we will not rely on your strength, but only on your strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's depend upon him to undergird us and keep us on that solid foundation. Then there is a hand of defense. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God's spirit will lift up a standard against him. God is a mighty defender of the humble, and the protector of the weak. Do you feel weak this morning? Is there an area of life that you need strengthened by him? Remember that God is our defender, and God is there, and he's able to help us. Psalms 10, 12 says, Arise, O Lord, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. God will listen, encourage, and defend those who walk humbly, before the Lord, Psalms 10, 17, and 18. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. We're going to pray that God will defend us against the assaults of the wicked one, that the enemy brings against us in temptation, and oppression. Sister Samory is going to lead us. Father, this story reminds us when you people, you children, who were promised by you everything that you were going to do on their behalf, and the enemy came right into their camp to take away yes. what you have already promised, what you have already spoken. Lord, we're not any different. We stand in your promises. Yes, we, we hang nowhere. We stand in your mighty promises. Our feet are in the solid rock. And Satan comes right into our territory. And Lord, we claim. We speak. We stand. We shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Because you have spoken. Spoken. Yes, you and have, what it Lord. is mine is mine. What you have promised me is Hallelujah. mine. Yes, and I Jesus. shall not be moved because you are the one who have promised. Satan, get out. Yes. Get out. Amen. Get out. In the name of Jesus. You are a defeated foe. You have no power. You are my defender. Yes. In Jesus', Jesus. name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last one is the prayer. The good hand of the Lord is upon us. Ezra and Nehemiah are good examples of this. According to the good hand of the Lord that was upon me, I, Ezra said, God brought me from Babylon back to this place by the mighty hand of God. Nehemiah said the same thing. God brought him through all the dangers 
back to the land that God had promised to him. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was already scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his request, according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. This is the good hand of the Lord. Amen. I noticed something the other day when we're reading in our devotions from the book of Daniel. When they wanted to accuse Daniel before the king, they came to the king and said, that Daniel that you have chosen and went on to tell things that he would not bow before your gods. Again, they came and said, that Daniel that you have chosen is not obeying you. But afterwards, when God speaks, he says, this Daniel. Amen. And here he says, this Ezra, this man that God has called. So remember, we are in the hand of God and God is calling. Lord, let your good hand be upon us, we pray. We want to continue. Please get the song ready. To occupy the territory that you have given us. Enlarge it to your praise and glory. We want to expand your kingdom to every tribe, every tongue, and every nation that they might know that you are Lord. Amen. I found a song that was written about the hand of the Lord. As they sing it, let's pray it in our heart that God will make it real, that we will never, never forget it. Bible. Keep your dial set. Tell your neighbor about the old-fashioned saying convention. Here's the Wilburns to sing the hand of the Lord. You can feel the wind blow, but there's no one who knows where it's going. Sometimes it's a breeze. Gently stirring the trees as it's blowing. That's just how it is when the spirit within starts to flow in. Like the wind, it's a warm, gentle touch from the hand of the Lord. to Jesus. Though your tempest may blow, He has promised He won't ever leave us. At the end of the road, He will carry the load for the weakest. Saying, listen to me, stand still, and see the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, has the strength to move mountains, forks, rivers, and valleys, and make oceans run. Say 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we come to you today needing the hand of God upon us. And Lord, we're going to pray for those who may not know you today. Before they leave this place, they will know you as their Lord and Savior. Church, pray with me as we pray with those who may have gotten away from God and need the hand of God upon them once again. Dear Jesus, I come to you today. I thank you that you came into this world and you died upon the cross. You were buried in a grave, but you arose from the dead. And today you are alive. I believe in you, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Now look up and thank him. Lord, we thank you for the hand of forgiveness, the hand of mercy, the hand of your grace, the hand that restores. Reach down. Thank you, Jesus. For me. Yes, when he reached. Way down for me. me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand. When my Savior reached down for me, oh, when, when he, he reached way down, down for me, I was lost and undone without hand for me. Let's stand together, everybody standing. I want you to lay your hand on the shoulder of the one on the right and the left and pray for each other at this time. God stand, lay your hand upon an individual. Pray that God's hand will be upon them. Lord, we need your hand your hand of grace, your hand of restoration, your hand of transformation. It comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. In our lives today, Lord, we believe you and we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. We give glory and honor to you, dear Lord, for the hand of God that is upon your children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, in advance for the answers to prayer. We believe you, Lord, and we give glory to your name. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. When he reached down his hand for Aren't you glad God reached down to you? Amen. I'm going to ask everybody, please don't leave at this time. 
I have something very special at the end that I want to give to you. So please hang with us. We're going to ask the Van Dyke family to come. We're going to pray for them at this time if they'll come. Stand in front of the altar. Pastors and uh, deacons that are here, will you come? Stand behind them as we pray today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your hand that is upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, put your arms about it. Those that are with this family, please come. And stand behind us as we pray. I suppose that'll be everybody from Ghana. Please come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. There's nothing like the sorrow that comes when we lose a loved one, a spouse, a mother, a father. I remember I was 24 when my father dropped dead, and I thought my world had come to an end. But day by day, God helps us to build our life again and project in the future knowing that someday we're going to be gathered around the great throne of God and be with Him forever and forever. So we're going to pray for this family. Stretch your hand towards them. Let's believe God, that God will restore what has been taken away. Lord, we thank you today for the life of Sister Gifty. She was a woman of prayer. She was a woman of her family. She loved her husband and her children made sure that everything was right in their family. Lord, in your providence, you've taken her home to be with you. And you know the sorrow that's come to our hearts in the loss of one that we loved and thank God for again and again. And I pray today that you would come to this family by the power of your Holy Spirit. The dad, the two boys, the two girls, Lord, I know that it is, as they travel, the uncertainty of the future that you will be with them by the power of your Spirit. Let the hand of God be upon them, I pray. Lee and guide them day by day, restoring what has been taken away. Lord, do it by the presence of your power, by your great mercy, by your great grace. In those lonely hours, Lord, speak to them and be with them in a precious way. Don't leave them alone, but Lord, let your people gather around them, I pray, to encourage them in you. This we believe and we thank you in your wonderful name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Now you can just stay here for just a few minutes. I have a video that I'm going to show you, and it's on the prayer of Jabez. I didn't know there was such a thing, but I found it. I said, this is what I need. This is what our people want. So we're going to play it, and we're going to sing it. So let's have the video.
I want you to wake up tomorrow morning saying, bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Amen. God will do it as we call upon him. Brother James, God bless you and your family. And I want to encourage the church to talk to these children about their mother. They gave a beautiful description of a godly woman who trained them in the things of God. And I was so inspired by uh, Kevin, Devin, Devin, and Ronnie, and uh, Vanessa, and uh, Raven. Okay. Beautiful names. God bless you, and thank you so much. Brother O'Foy is going to come and pray the closing prayer. And uh, I trust that you have a great day. Tomorrow evening, the Lord willing, there are 35 of us that are headed for Turkey and for Israel. If you'll keep us in your prayers. Next Sunday, you're going to have a great preacher that's going to be here. He's going to preach to you while I'm gone. And you'll really enjoy him. So keep that in mind and be here next Sunday. I like it when you stay by the stuff when I'm gone. Amen. Don't let the devil take our stuff. You hang in there and believe God for it. Amen. Brother Forey, you prayed that God would enlarge your territory. Amen. Amen. God did that, didn't he? He, he did. He gave he you a really big territory. Did. Give me a real big Well, I want you to know that you're not finished yet. All right, thank you. There's a whole lot of more territory there. Okay, Amen. Okay. God okay, bless thank you. Thank you very much. He's going to pray for our president, pray for our military, 
pray for leaders around the world, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay. Um, but I'd like us to sing a song, too. Um, the, um, I'm not a good singer, but... Um, um, that God... What's the name? No, I don't even remember the song. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, Tell us what it is. We'll okay. You and I will God, um, <laughs> God, change my, change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like. change our hearts and be like you, God. We are not worthy. We are sinners. We don't deserve your glory, but you are a merciful God. You are a forgiving God. You are a God that heals. You are a God that protects. God, at this time, we call upon you to give comfort and peace to give to Adi and the family that are present here. God, that you will touch their hearts. You will give them the comfort. You will protect them. You'll be the mother to them. You'll be their husband. You'll be the wife. You will be everything, God. And we here, God, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for all your blessings that you've given us. Be merciful unto us, oh God. Change our hearts so that we'll be like you. And we'll know you more and more. God, at this time, do we pray that this country, God, you will provide us the leader that can lead us to you. Who would... Do things that will turn back you, turn your face back to us. God, we are asking for your mercy. We are asking for your blessings. We are asking for the protection of our president. That you give him wisdom. That in this last year, he will do things that will glorify you. That whoever he chooses to go to the Supreme Court will be somebody that has the word, the God's word in heart. That you come up with laws that God will always point to you. God, we ask for the peace of Jerusalem. God, give the land the peace that they deserve. Jerusalem is your holy land. God, and the people there, God bless and protect them. We here, we need your peace and your security that you only can provide. And the congregation here, God, 
protect us. Fill us with your blessings. Fill us with your glory. That as we leave here, we'll evermore give glory to you and always sing your praises in Christ's name. Amen.